everyone. We are live from the Global Women's Rights Awards hosted by the Feminist Majority Foundation at the Red Carpet. Um, Laura Dern, one of the honorees tonight and a major player in Time's Up, is about to head over for some questions. So we're going to talk to her a little bit about the work she's doing and being honored tonight. Um, she is one of many honorees, including labor rights leaders, civil rights leaders, and some of the honorers also include established longtime feminist leaders as well, like Eleanor Smale and Hilda Solis. Oh, here she comes. So Laura's with Monica Ramirez, who heads up the National Alliance for Women Farm Workers, the only organization in the U.S. dedicated to women farm workers. Um, she represents in that organization about 700,000 women who wrote a really moving letter of solidarity to the women of Me Too and Time's Up when it first launched post Weinstein. Um, and so, yeah, it was a really great letter of solidarity between these women farm workers and women in Hollywood saying, us too, we also experience sexual harassment on a pretty regular basis and we're with you in this movement. Getting some photos. <laughs> awesome. Um, so we'll be going live tonight from the theater as well, where the honorers and the honorees will be talking about how amazing each other are. And they will be hanging out with lots of FMF folks and then joining them in a conversation um, about the future of the movement, about fighting back, about maintaining this momentum. Um, and you can watch that on our Facebook page, Ms. Magazine Facebook dot com slash Ms. Magazine. Um, and we'll also be live tweeting it and you can connect to with the feminist majority side at facebook.com slash feminist majority foundation and twitter.com slash majority speaks. So they'll be live tweeting, doing lots of fun stuff and we'll be live behind the scenes here at the red carpet. And then we're going to be backstage during the show too, talking to more of the honorers and honorees about their work and how much they've learned from each other. Um, And so Laura's been a longtime feminist activist. She was one of the first women to dive in to Time's Up from Hollywood. Um, and Monica has also been a leader and at the forefront of her work and her movement. Monica's being introduced tonight by the one and only Dolores Huerta, who was her, um, her icon growing up, as is the case I would assume, with many of us. Um, so it should be really exciting. I'm excited to talk to them both about Time's Up, Me Too, and building a movement that doesn't leave anyone behind in the fight against sexual harassment and assault, um, which I think some, is something Monica can speak to really powerfully as someone who has really carved out a movement for these women that were so invisible for so long. Um, and, you know, such a natural extension of the work that Dolores Huerta has done, organizing farm workers on the ground. Um, they're just talking to the Hollywood Reporter. And then, and then we see some of the FMF folks coming up the line, too. We've got some board members and some more honorees. Adama Iwu is back here. Adama is the founder of We Said Enough which was an organization that launched with an open letter about sexual harassment in state legislatures. So lobbyists, women lawmakers, um, elected officials and their aides, um, and this sexual harassment that they were experiencing from male colleagues in their chambers. Um, and so she launched We Said Enough, which was a movement to push back on that. I'm really excited to talk to her about how not only we eradicate sexual harassment in the policy making space, but how policy can help us eradicate sexual harassment everywhere.
Um, and I also see Elizabeth Nayamayaro and Nina Shaw coming up. And Nina is with Cheryl Boone Isaacs, the former and immediate outgoing president of the Academy, as in the Academy for Motion Picture Arts and Sciences. And um, Nina Shaw is a powerhouse feminist attorney who was one of the founding sort of core members of Time's Up and helped form the organization. They're also with Kathy Spiller, our a magnificent executive editor. Um, and so they'll be coming around soon too. Um, Like, I think Nina Shaw and Cheryl just fell off the red carpet. Hey, y'all. Carmen, it is so great to see you. It's wonderful to see you. I'm a big fan of Carmen. I am a big fan of both of yours. Yeah, and I'm excited to talk to you both. Um, so, Laura, I'm interested in, you know, Time's Up has played such a major role in shaping this moment, one in which women worldwide and, you know, just in every sector rising up and saying enough is enough. What do you hope comes next in Hollywood and then beyond Hollywood? Well, especially because I have the privilege of standing next to Monica Ramirez, I mean, I hope that Hollywood only represents another workplace environment in which egregious behavior must change and we must all work together to look at how to protect each other, ourselves, men, women, and children in the workplace and at home. Um, we stand together as fellow female workers. Mm -hmm. And one of the things we bonded um, over and one of the most extraordinary offerings that our, our fellow female workers, being female farm workers, when they wrote the gorgeous letter that was shared in solidarity to what the women in our industry were going through, that really moved us was we both are in industries where we have been in the workplace environment with adults legally as 12-year-old children. Mm -hmm. So we both know the experience of what it is to be in situations where we're not going to have control over our environment or our safety necessarily. And so now, as adults, we want to obviously protect those environments because children work in those environments legally. And that is a rarity for many industries, but in ours, it is the norm to have yeah. children working as adults in the workplace, if you will. Yeah, and well, speaking of the letter, I was so interested too in talking to you about how do you think we can not only maintain, you know, your work builds on so much historic work, especially the work of Dolores Huerta, who is honoring you tonight. Um, and, you know, how do we sort of not only maintain the momentum, but sustain, keep sustaining this growing movement that has been, I mean, you know, it's decades long. And how do we not only do that, but then make sure that we're not leaving anyone behind. You know, that none of these pushes that we're seeing sort of only help women in one sector or only help women of one background or one, uh, you know, identity or class. Mm -hmm. So I think the way that we keep this momentum going is we have a personal commitment, you know, as, as sisters in this work to ensure that we continue to do our work better. And part of doing our work better is making sure that we are being conscientious of who is at the table who has the opportunity to speak about their truth and their reality, and how we work to bring other people in when they're being left behind. So for example, as we talk about what it's like it to be working in agriculture, what it's like to be working in the entertainment industry, we also want to lift up the fact that there are women who are working in tech, and there are women who are working in law, and there are women who are working in hotels who are experiencing the very same things, maybe in different work sites and different conditions, but, the, but very similar types of exploitation. and it is incumbent upon us to make sure that we bring that into the space when we're in a space and have the opportunity to talk about these issues. Um, but I think the other thing is 
that we need to make sure that we are building strong enough coalitions that can last for time, for years to come. And I think that right now where we are is we don't want to just talk about the problems that exist. We want to talk about the solutions. And we want to focus on not just on the accountability, but we want to focus on actually doing the hard work to build the world that we know we deserve to live in and the workplaces that we deserve to work in. And so that is that is the next step. The next step isn't just about uh, you know the holding people accountable. The next step is really about us taking steps forward so that we can thrive and we can reach our full potential by working in places that are good for us and where we can really be the best we can be. It made me laugh with horror the other night I was hearing a gentleman in an interview speak and he said, you know, women's issues like safe workplace environments and it's like, that's a human issue. We're here right. because of human rights issues and we're standing together and there isn't enough conversation that we're here for all the children to be raised in environments where they understand abusive power and they know how to stand up and speak up and that's male and female. Um, work, and we all have to work together. This isn't uh, a girl issue. <laughs> That's right. And when, and they want to be safe. <laughs> <laughs> just, just that. But, and, and when women can thrive in the workplace, that's better for all of us, and that's better for our economy. So that's part of the message that we have to make sure that we stay. Yes. Safety in the workplace isn't a crazy idea. Yeah. You know. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, both of you. I'll let you continue your way down the magical red carpet, and I'll see you later tonight backstage. Yeah. All right, awesome. And um, so it, we have a big group coming up back here. So Elizabeth Naimayaro, looking really amazing in this red power suit, is the head of He for She at UN Women, which is the um, worldwide campaign to mobile engage in the fight against violence against women and for gender equality. Um, she is next to Adama Iwu, who we were talking about before, who founded We Said Enough. Um, and Adama is standing next to Maria Lana Durazo, who's also an honoree tonight. She is the general vice president of Unite Here. Um, she is an amazing labor leader and um, just a trailblazing force for you know women in the workplace. And is currently working with hotel workers um, to help drive the campaign for safety panic buttons for them. Um, you know, it's startling. We did a Ms. story on the sort of sexual harassment that hotel workers face, not even just from the people they work with, but from their clients. Um, from, you know, the startling amount of hotel housekeepers who open the door to a naked man um, in the hotel room. And, you know, hotel workers in that piece really opened up about the idea that people who pay to stay at these hotels tend to think that they are also paying for the ability to behave that way. And so women in that industry have really been empowered by the Me Too movement to speak up, fight back, claim their rights, and say enough is enough, and it's time for our workplaces to respect us more than they respect their income and to take us seriously and to listen to us when we're dealing with these issues and you know, to sort of prioritize our safety. So here's the entire powerhouse lineup. There's Kathy Spiller, executive editor of Ms. Um, Carol Leaf, member of the FMF board. <laughs> Ellie Smeal, president of the Feminist Majority Foundation, next to Maria Lana Durazo. You can see Nina Shaw next to Elizabeth on the other side. And then Mavis Leno over there talking to Laura Dern. She's the chair of the Afghan, the campaign for Afghan women and girls at the Feminist Majority Foundation, which was nominated for a Nobel Peace Prize in 2002 and has long fostered um, global sisterhood in the fight for gender equality, and especially fighting gender apartheid in Afghanistan and the reign of the Taliban in that region. Um, awesome, and so here's Nina Shah. Hey, Nina, it's great to talk to you. I'm gonna switch sides. <laughs> it's really fabulous to talk to you today. So I'm just curious, in, you know, you were a driving force in founding Time's Up, which has just had such an impact on expanding this conversation to really be about solutions and support and, you know, going beyond sharing these stories about the terrible stuff that we're facing and towards how do we finally 
figure out a way to make it stop. And what do you like? What have you really seen in the months since during this explosion? What is sort of giving you hope? What do you think is going to come next? Well, I'm I'm so pleased that there are so many really young women, um, girls in high school, women in college, who have reached out to us and they want to be part of Times Up. Um, and we just want to be there and be the best we possibly can for them in the same way that the feminist majority, that Ms. Magazine, that all of those things have been here because quite frankly if they weren't here then we're, what would we do? This is the foundation upon which all of our work is built. So um, a lot of people thank us at Time's Up but we really know that what we're doing is we're standing on the shoulders of so many generations of activists and thank God that they've been there just yeah. holding, you know, upholding it, holding the flame, fighting the fight, and, and we are the beneficiary of all of that. Awesome. Thank you so much. You. Yeah, and I'll see you backstage tonight. Yeah, thank you so much. Awesome. So, um, and you know, Nina Shah had a very sort of storied career as um, a powerhouse attorney. Um, you know, her work on this issue goes way beyond Time's Up, and you know, she has just been able to have such an impact in this space and, um, you know, really help forge Time's Up into this powerful movement. Um, and so, and I think that'll tie in really well with Elizabeth when she gets here, because Elizabeth was, you know, she launched the He For She campaign, and she has such a powerful story of, you know, she's, she's involved at the UN because it was the work of the UN that changed her life, that saved her life uh, when she was a young girl in Zimbabwe. And it's just such a moving and powerful testament to the impact that this work can have. And I know she has so many also really moving stories of the way he for she has been able to change the tide, has been able to help um, in countries all over the world better engage in this and become better allies and also really start seeing this work and this shift as their fight. Like, um, to sort of speak to what Monica was saying before, that it's not just a women's issue, that men need to be engaged and involved in that, you know, this powerful sort of male solidarity movement that she helped create has only become, you know, timelier with the Me Too explosion. Um, oh, awesome. Here's Mavis Lando. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> I'm like, hey, Mavis. Yeah. I'm like, come on down. So I'm here with Mavis Leno, the chair of the FMF's Campaign for Afghan Women and Girls. And, you know, your work has been so, I mean, groundbreaking in this area. And FMF's work in fighting the Taliban has been so critical. And as the Me Too movement grows into a global solidarity movement, what do you think are some of the lessons we can learn from the campaigns that we fought in Afghanistan as we try to expand outward and, you know, continue forging sisterhood across geographic lines? I think one of the great advantages that women have and should use and helped a lot when we use them, women have a tendency through acculturation, not through any other reason, to be more empathetic with people. And so it is easier to get a woman who has never even heard of the Taliban years ago to say, they do what, what? Well, I'm not gonna let that happen. Yeah. Rather than, well, so what, it's another country, it's a million years away, you know, uh, what can we do? And, uh, and it's that spirit of being able to feel intensely for other people, not just for your own situation, that I think is our uh, kind of our stealth weapon. <laughs> yeah, so our secret power has not changed, that the personal is political, right? Yeah, exactly, exactly. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. I'm like, I'll let you continue on your, I know, your merry way down the very busy carpet. And I'll see you backstage. Thank you, Mavis. Isn't she wonderful? Um, as we, um, oh, awesome. And so LA County Supervisor and former Labor Secretary Hilda Solis is also on the carpet now. Hi, Elizabeth. It's so great to see you. Yeah. Um, so, you know, I'm really curious, um, 
you've launched this really powerful and effective movement to mobilize men, not just as allies, but as accomplices in the fight for gender equality. And that work seems so much more powerful and salient right now as we enter into this period of sort of, you know, reckoning and how do we increase accountability and make this an issue that men are invested in and are taking up as their own. And so what sort of lessons have you gleaned and, you know, what sort of stories do you think you hold with you as we build this Me Too movement into a global movement too. Well, thank you. And again, it's such an honor to be here today uh, to be part of this really incredible event. One of the things I think that um, I want to highlight is this idea that we are now, I think, I think we can all agree that we are living one of the most exciting moments of our lives. I think there is so much momentum on gender equality, whether it be the women's marches, whether it be movements like Time's Up and Me Too. However, one of the biggest things that we cannot forget is that this cannot be a women versus men uh, movement because there's also quite a lot of polarization. So it's really figuring out a way, as you said, you know, how do we engage collectively as society to address this issue? Because it is not a woman issue, gender equality. It is a human rights issue, but it is also fundamentally a societal issue. And men are part of that society. And the reality is that they hold the majority of the power. So it's really figuring out, you know, how do we engage them, but also give them accountability to actually do something and create the change that we all want to see. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. Uh, yeah. Oh, my God. No. Yeah, I'll see you backstage. Thank you so much. Awesome. So, yeah, we have a we have a full house out here. I see actor Cameron Mannheim over here on the red carpet as well, a longtime FMF supporter, and she's going to be um, introducing FMF president Ellie Smeal tonight um, during the show. Um, longtime feminist, longtime activist, and longtime FMF supporter. So I'm excited to talk to her too. And also, obviously, just a super funny, amazing actor. Um, and yeah, you know, we'll also be talking to the honorees and the honorers backstage. I think some of them have filtered out into the reception that's happening right next to us. Um, but, you know, each honoree is being sort of honored by someone with a really personal connection to their work. So before we spotted L.A. County Supervisor and former Labor Secretary Hilda Solis on the carpet, a groundbreaking, you know, the first Latino woman to be appointed to that cabinet position, um, one of the first Latinas to serve in um, California elected office, and um, she is going to be introducing Maria Lana Durazo, and they've actually worked together on a lot of labor campaigns. They're two very powerful, amazing, trailblazing women. Um, and like I said, Dolores will be introducing Monica, which feels like a really perfect pairing for them, too. Um, I'm also seeing some more FMF members on the carpet who may or may not be crossing in the opposite direction. We've got Lorraine Scheinberg over there, a member of the FMF board, um, talking to Ellie, the president, and Kathy, our executive editor, who's also the executive director of FMF. And Kathy and Ellie will both be in conversation with the honorees tonight, um, and we'll be live streaming that conversation, so make sure you tune in. It's at... Uh, Facebook.com slash Ms. Magazine, but also you can just go to bit.ly slash GWRA18 live, all caps, and that'll take you right there. It starts at 7.30 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, 10.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Um, oh, there they are, the powerhouse crew. <laughs> with, actually, with, Secret with uh, County Supervisor Solis, who was on the cover of Ms., um, during the Obama years in an issue that was focused around the work she was doing specifically to, you know, improve working conditions and, um, and labor rights and expand economic justice for women across the country. Um, Um, just people spotting.
And yeah, so we'll just, you know, we'll keep waiting to see. There's a lot of slots on the carpet. Um, we will, things will start packing up in about 15, and then we'll be getting ready for the live stream and the behind the scenes stuff that we're gonna be doing here on the Miz account. If you stay tuned, um, we will be backstage talking to honorers and honorees a little bit about, you know, what inspires them about each other, um, how they're gonna be working together to build multi-generational and inclusive movements for equality. Um, and sort of what's left, what pieces are left. Hey, yes, absolutely. Hey, Cameron, it's really great to meet you. I'm Carmen, I'm with Miz. Oh my God, thank you for being here. Yeah, and you know, you've been such a longtime supporter of FMF and such a longtime feminist activist and um, in Hollywood. And so I'm curious to see sort of what has been like, what do you find the most powerful about this moment, and what do you think makes it so unique in con in terms of, you know, what feminist activism we've seen before? Well, I have been doing this for a long time. I've been a feminist activism activist. Let me start again. I, <laughs> I have been an activist for a long time. I come from a long line of political activists, and I've been marching and doing all of this since I can remember, but what's so exciting about this time in history is that I think everyone is on the same wavelength as I am for the first time. I mean, there's been so many times where I'm like, why aren't you marching with us? Why aren't you doing it? And all of a sudden, there, there's something that's happened in the zeitgeist. It's something that has happened to women that felt empowered by each other, by the truth, by standing up. They're, they're, they're bravery and courage is just on high and everyone has banded together and we're this unbelievable army. It has been so exciting to watch it happen. Exciting to be at the marches, exciting to be at the phone banks, to be making the signs, to be hashtagging everything. We're, we're just, it feels like it's the first time that there's hope that it's all going to change, you know? Before, it was just felt like such an upward climb, and we couldn't get the young kids to get involved, and we couldn't get these people, and now everyone's involved, because it's not just a cute little slogan, enough is enough. Enough is enough, and it is stopping right here and right now, and we know that to be true. It's so exciting. Awesome, thank you so much. And you know, we'll be we'll be backstage. I'll be seeing you there too. And I'm so excited to hear you speak tonight. And I'm really glad you could be here. Thank you so much. Uh, I feel grateful that I get to introduce Eleanor Smeal. She <laughs> is, you know, the mother of this movement. It's incredible. And to know that the ERA is just two states away from being Yeah, it is. Woo! At I long mean, last. I saw Ellie and I'm like, you know what, your work can be done after we get the ERA <laughs> right about it. You've done enough, you can rest. And she's like, never. <laughs> yeah, Ellie never sleeps. Yeah. She's my hero. <laughs> Me too. Thank you so much. Oh, I see, we were shouting Si Se Puede because Dolores is here. Always such a joy to see Dolores at these events. She is, oh, she is such an, I mean, legendary activist and icon. Um, you know, last night, a lot of the honorees were all talking about the ways in which um, Dolores sort of has played such a pivotal role in all of their lives. And, you know, she's been there, she continues to be there, and she really just, she is always like, oh, got another thing to go to. Dolores is always fighting. She is never done rallying. Um, she, you know, comes to the office with petitions in hand. So she is an organizer at heart. And she is still leading this fight. Um, she's here with her daughter. And like I said, she'll be honoring um, and speaking to the work of Monica Ramirez. So um, Dolores Ferreta uh, was, um, the co-founder of the United Farm Workers Union with Cesar Chavez. And she is, yeah, she is honoring Monica who handles, um, who organizes hundreds of thousands of women farm workers. So they built, you know. <laughs> uh, 
um, their work is definitely built on each other's shoulders. And, um, you know, I know that'll be a really special moment tonight. <laughs> like, I'm very much so hoping we get a moment with Dolores. She's also on the um, FMF board. She is a member. She also was a Ms. Magazine Woman of the Year um, in, like, I think it was 1997. And there she is with Monica, who she's honoring tonight. And perhaps Dor Dolores' biggest accolade was being awarded the Presidential Medal of Freedom by Barack Obama in 2012, as well as the Eleanor Roosevelt Award by Bill Clinton. So great to talk to you. You know, the question I want to ask you is you are, you, you never stop. You're always fighting. I was just saying that last night you showed up to the office with petitions. You're always rallying and organizing. And you have been doing this work for so long. And I'm just wondering what gives you, what keeps you motivated and hopeful about creating change? And do you, do you think we're at a tipping point? Do you think we're finally going to see some movement on these issues? Uh, I do believe that. And I do believe it's because we have so many young women out there that are fighting really hard. And uh, it's our Me Too movement. And then we look at the other movements like uh, Black Lives Matter that's being led by women. You know, yes. so all you see uh, so that young women and o older women like myself, they were all in there fighting together. I do believe that we are reaching a new threshold. And this is just the beginning. This is just the beginning because we're going to keep going forward, and we're, and we're going to see a lot of changes. And it's going to be great because I think uh, women are finally going to be respected, recognized, and uh, take their place at the table. Awesome. Thank you so much, and thank you for all that you do. I'm excited. We'll be backstage, too, so I'll see you there. Yeah. Thank you so much. The labor powerhouses are <laughs> the workers' rights trailblazers are lining up for this photo. And so that's LA County Supervisor Hilda Solis there next to Dolores, and then Maria Lana Durazo from Unite Here, and Monica Ramirez from the National Alliance for Women Farm Workers. Alianza Nacional de Campesinas. Um, and, you know, we'll be shouting out all of the organizations, um, you know, during the live stream and sort of the live Twitter coverage. So definitely if you're trying to connect with the work that these women are doing, there will be tons of opportunities um, during the program from like 7.30 to 9 Pacific Standard Time. And that'll be on our Twitter feed, twitter.com slash Ms. Magazine, as well as the Feminist Majority Foundation's Twitter feed, which is twitter.com slash Majority Speaks. And it looks like, it looks like some folks may still All right, well, it looks like the um, carpet is closing up a little bit. We've got some, 
some guests and attendees taking photos back here. Um, so, yeah, thank you so much for tuning in. Um, we are going to save this live video to our stories um, as a featured story so you can send it on out, keep watching it, keep re-watching it if you missed any moments of it. And stay tuned because we'll be back in just a few minutes with our coverage from backstage with all the honorers, honorees, and featured guests and the members of the FMF staff and board. Um, and yeah, follow us on facebook.com slash Ms. Magazine for the live stream and twitter.com slash Ms. Magazine for the live tweets and coverage from the reset from tonight, from backstage and from what's going on in the main theater. Um, so yeah, and then don't forget to join in the conversation with the hashtag Feminist Rise Up. Thank you so much. Awesome. Great to meet you. Like, are we on? All right, JK, we're back. We're live. We're on the red carpet again. Hey, I'm here with Gabrielle Dennis. And so what brings you here tonight? What are you excited about? You know, anytime you get a group of women together with a cause, sign me up. You know, I'm very excited to learn about all of the honorees and what they've been doing and why they're being honored tonight. You know, educating myself on, you know, women that are in my backyard that I can uh, learn something from. Awesome. And, you know, as a woman in the entertainment industry, you know, so many of the folks here tonight are folks who are super active in Time's Up, who have been trailblazers in the Me Too movement. Um, what do you see, have you like seen a sea change? Do you feel like things really are shifting behind the scenes because of Time's Up and these movements? Absolutely. You know what gets me most excited is watching the young people speaking up and having a voice um, because I get inspired by watching, you know, and listening to them and they're so passionate. Um, and what I think is that, like you said, there's a movement and there's, I feel like we're right at the, the cusp of like this change and it's a wave of energy that is so contagious and that is so important and needed right now. And I feel like the more that we have events and foundations and organizations like this and the women that are being honored, the closer we're going to get to that finish line of, of making a change, making a difference. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for being here tonight and supporting the work. And I hope you really enjoy it. It was great to talk to you. Yeah, thanks. And then, ooh, Adama's back. So Adama Iwu is back. I've been trying to get to talk to Adama Iwu for so long. Um, so she is the founder. I'm going to say it. I'm just going to keep saying it. She's the founder of We Said Enough. Really cool organization that is spotlighting how, um, you know, women in politics, in local politics and at the national level are dealing with sexual harassment and just finally saying enough is enough. And she actually launched um, We Said Enough, which is her organization to fight um, sexual harassment in those spaces with an open letter signed by hundreds of women who worked in the um, in state legislatures and especially the California state legislature. Um, so definitely really excited to talk to her. Um, and, you know, she was actually, we honored Adama at the Ms. Luncheon that happened up in Palo Alto about a month ago um, for her trailblazing work. And so it's exciting, too, to see her back here again being honored, her most natural state being praised because she deserves all of the praise for this incredible work that she's been doing. And, you know, we've seen women in Congress trying to organize and fight for better protections for better workplace policies and you know in in our current political climate where we're now contemplating because of me too like what are the political solutions we need it's also super interesting to be watching women in politics say we also need a solution we're also dealing with this at our workplace which is representing you in congress and make crafting legislation meant to protect workers across the country and these are the basic protections that women in congress still lack and women in state legislatures still lack we also see Milk on the carpet. So Milk is performing tonight. She is a performing artist um, and the champion of the I Can't Qu Keep Quiet movement. Um, yeah, yeah, sure. And her song, Quiet, went from being a Women's March anthem to being the Me Too anthem. So we're definitely excited to have her here tonight at this event, which is so about, you know, the Me Too momentum and the Women's March momentum. Hey, Milk. It's Hi. great to meet you. Nice to meet I'm you. Carmen. I'm with Ms. Um, so excited for your performance tonight. 
And, you know, it's really, it's interesting to me that the song Quiet itself has an inception story that dates back way longer than Me Too, even before the Women's March. And it has sort of exploded on the scene at this unique moment where there's so much conversation and so many women are saying, I can't keep quiet. I have to talk about what's happening. I have to shatter the silence. Yeah. Um, what has it been like sort of being this having recording a song that is the soundtrack to this amazing moment in time it's one of the most wonderful privileges as an artist um i've written so many songs up to that point but that was the song that felt like my thesis and for that song to be the one that people are relating to confirms 150 percent that like we're so deeply connected um, at the core, we all want to be heard, we all want to feel safe, and we all want to be loved. And so it just it made me feel a lot of joy. And for being an emo emo <laughs> musician, it's kind of a big deal. I was like, what is this joy I'm feeling? This is weird. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Yeah, well, and I'm super excited for your performance tonight. And thank you so much for being here. And We'll also be backstage with our crew, so I'll be seeing you back there. Maybe we'll have another chance to talk. Yes, yeah. Yes, yeah. And, yeah, thank you so much for being here, and I'll let you continue down the merry, yes. the red brick road, okay, cool. the red carpet road. Thank you so yeah, much. Yeah, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Awesome. Well, I think we once again lost Adama, and, um, like, I think, the carpet is clearing. <laughs> I think the carpet is clearing, although I see some ushering of sorts over here. So maybe we'll stay tuned to see if maybe, um, I know there's a few folks who haven't, who haven't crossed over yet. Um, we're still, you know, Lily Hayden is going to be in the house tonight performing um, the major song that she recorded for Anita, the documentary about Anita Hill, obviously shouldn't be as relevant as it is now, decades after the Anita Hill testimony, you know, broke ground and shattered silence the way that it did. Um, but so amazing that she could be part of this event in which, you know, like Nina Shaw said, Anita Hill is one of the giants that the entire Me Too movement um, stands on her shoulders. And so it's really awesome to be able to see that history connect and those projects overlap. Um, so we can expect to see her maybe backstage and definitely tonight on the live stream. Um, Milk is also performing at the end of the live stream tonight. Lily and Milk are sort of bookending the amazing night that we have ahead of us here. Um, and yeah, so keep staying tuned with us. Um, I do think things are probably folding up here. So I'm going to sign off once again. And if we come back one more time, I mean, it'll just be because there's more amazing people on the carpet. But, yeah, we'll see you on the live stream, on our Facebook, and on Twitter, where we'll be following the night's events.